untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 5 color value pile that's looking to assemble a high number of basic land types on the battlefield to set up some domain synergies, as one of the key catch-up mechanisms in our deck is dragged to the bottom as a sweeper giving minus x minus x until end of turn, where x is 1 plus the number of basic land types among the lands we control, so it can potentially give minus 6 minus 6 if we have all 5 of them in play. Then we also have a Leyline Binding, which gets a 1 mana discount for each basic client type and can turn into a 1 mana instant speed removal spell in enchantment form. And then another great payoff for being a 5 color deck, of course, is the Kami War. The powerful 6 mana Saga starts out by exiling a null land permanent an opponent controls, then can bounce an opposing null land permanent back and make the opponent discard, could even return our own permanence if we really wanted to, and then eventually turns into the 6-6 six, six flyer with Trample, that when it attacks provides more value by getting stuff back from our graveyard. So an incredibly powerful card, and we can even find it using Atraxa Grand Unifier, which we're mostly hard casting in this deck at 7 mana, a 7-7 seven, seven Flying Vigilance, Death Touch and Lifelink. When it enters we get to reveal the top 10 cards of our library, and for each card type we can put one of those cards into our hand. Card types including land, creature, instant, sorcery, enchantment, artifact, even planeswalker despite not having any in this build, so a perfect curve topper for this deck. Then we also have two copies of Soul of Windgrace which can help ramp into some of those expensive cards. A 5-4, when it enters we can return any land from a graveyard onto the battlefield tapped under our control, and that's the reason why we have all the these fetch lands in the mana base, four copies of Riveteer's Overlook and a one of Obscura Storefront and plenty of basic lands to search up. That way these lands will be in our graveyard on turn four when we play Soul of Wind Grace so we can get immediate value. Can also maybe discard some lands using our second chapter from Fable of the Mirror Breaker or maybe a blood token from Harvester. Can also just cycle some lands or discard them with Soul of Wind Grace's ability. So that's another way of putting lands in the graveyard and can even get back opposing lands as well. So Soul of Wind Grace, perfect in this five color deck as well. And then of course we need to stay alive long enough to get to the late game. So besides our drag to the bottom we have some cheap spot removal including two copies of Cutdown, we've got our Leyline Binding as we discussed, two copies of Go for the Throat as well as Shieldred's Edict to deal with Planeswalkers mostly. It can also be a way of removing opposing creatures without targeting them which can be relevant against creatures like the Rod Priest which can otherwise poison us to death. And then we also have the full set of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, great card if we're playing red and no exception here. Can use a second chapter to dig for the missing pieces, maybe discard some removal spells in matchups where we don't need them. And then the Shaman can make more mana to help us ramp into Kami War and Atraxa. And to synergize with Reflection of Kiki Jiki, I'm playing two copies of Blood Tithe Harvester. Don't have room for the full playset here, also because we can't reliably cast Harvester on turn two as much as I would like, so we're just playing the two copies here. Still a great way to maybe trade off for an opposing creature early, can use the Blood Token to discard and draw, and then maybe set up the backdoor reanimation of Atraxa. If we play our Cruelty of Gigs, we can first take a look at the opponent's hand, take away a creature or Planeswalker. We can also search our library for any card, put it into our hand at the cost of three life, and finally we can return a creature from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, so we can potentially reanimate Atraxa, can also read ahead to the third chapter to immediately get back a creature from the graveyard, so the one of cruelty is also a lot of fun. And then another great value card is Glissa Sunslayer 3-3 with First Strike and Death Touch, so a nightmare for creature decks to attack into, and if it hits the opponent we can draw a card at the cost of one life, we can destroy an enchantment, or remove up to three counters from target permanent, so you can remove charge counters from opposing bankbuster, or loyalty counters from opposing planeswalkers, so Glissa is also quite versatile, and is good against both creature decks and control strategies, as it's kind of a must answer for the opponent. And then we've got a couple artifacts as well, which we can find with Atraxa, including two copies of the Celestus, another great tool at kind of fixing our mana in a five color deck, as well as ramping. And by switching between day and night, we can also get rid of cards we don't need in certain matchups. And then the Reckoner Bankbuster, as we all know, another great source of card advantage. Don't need as many in this deck since we have other ways of generating value, but still nice to have. And then the mana base is kind of the tricky part, so we've got, as we said, plenty of fetch lands to go with Soul of Windgrace, and then we also have a lot of tri lands, which help us assemble the five different basic land types for domain. So playing a turn one Rafine's Tower tapped, followed by a turn two tapped Proving Ground, already gives us all five basic land types, so we'll be able to potentially cast a one mana Leyline Binding of the white mana from Rafine's Tower, so that's very fun. 
and then we also have a one of headquarters couple non basic lands here with the springs to help us cast a turn two harvester turn three fable and then the shattered sanctum since we don't really need white early on eventually on turn three we're happy to cast a one mana binding typically don't need to cast it on turn two already and then a plenty of basic lands to search up with our fetch lands and then before i forget also two copies of duress since we can still be kind of vulnerable to opposing copies of invoke despair in the mono black or heavy black mid-range decks so duress is a cheap way to take that away and then our or Fable or Leyline Binding and Kami War are more likely to be safe and then can also maybe take away counter spells in the control matchups to prevent the opponent from countering or big payoff cards like Atraxa and the Kami War. Of course can be dead in certain matchups like Blue-White Soldiers but if we know we're up against Soldiers we can just discard it to a second chapter from Fable or maybe a Blood Token from Harvester and we can also cast some of these one mana spells after casting a turn 3 Celestis which can work out nicely. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems keepable. We've got four out of five basic land types, so we'll have a two mana binding ready to go on turn two. But for now, we can just duress, play a storefront, and set up turn three fable. Okay, put on an all creature deck. So duress misses. But at least we know our removal is going to be effective. And then I should probably get another black source to set up for drag to the bottom at some point. Which is going to be a pretty important card for us. So point still has double Gala Greeters, double Defiler and an Augur. So for now I think we Fable. Probably discarding one of our expensive cards. And then Binding should go after Augur of Autumn if possible. There's also Boseju, which could blow up our binding, which we have to keep in mind. So there's Augur. Okay. So what to discard here? Maybe an Atraxa. This turn I can Edict plus binding and keep the Kami War, which we're closer to casting. Cutdown's also great. So now I could cut down plus Edicts, hang on to binding. And we'll still be able to cast it after making a treasure. But next turn we should be able to cast our Kami War. Opponent runs out Buseju, so we don't have to worry about it. Double Gala Greeters here. Okay, so... I could binding one of the Gala Greeters, so they don't get a chance to make a treasure token. I think we just let that go. Since next turn we'll play Kami War, which can also bounce the Filer after they play it. Hopefully before they get any value. And then for now we'll just exile the Gala Greeters. And then I don't expect them to have many answers to our Kami War, so once it transforms it can take over. So there's the Filer, but... Besides making a treasure token here, it's not going to accomplish much. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand has potential. Probably going to keep my untapped land for turn 3. And then probably kick things off with Proving Grounds, even though if I play Tower, I could play a 1-mana Binding, which is maybe worth it here. And I could still play a turn 2 Harvester if I really wanted to. Opponent on Junt Colors, so could be kind of a mid-range battle. Okay, opponent also 4 Colors at least, and a Briefcase. Could be a Tokens deck. Um, do we want to Fable? Do we want to Glissa? Or just Tap Land Harvester is also an option. I think I'm liking Fable to start maybe making more treasure to ramp into Atraxa. Okay, 
Okay. And then can easily discard Harvester. And potentially even a go for the throat. Although it's possible something like Mondrak shows up next turn and I want to be able to take it out. But sure, let's discard go for the throat. We'll find more removal. See if we get a chance to attack. Binding, okay. Goes for the token. So we could play another Fable, or we could play Glissa, although they have a 1-1 to jump with for at least a turn. So let's go for Fable. And then now we might want to play Overlook, so if we draw Soul of Wind Grace, we get a land back right away. And we'll go for a Forest, have plenty of black already. Okay, cut down deals with the second Shaman. And there's another Atraxa. So you could see discarding one Atraxa, especially if we pick up Cruelty of Gix to reanimate it. And then hang on to Glissa, Lands, and second Atraxa. Okay, just play Glissa tap lane, then pass. Don't have anything exciting to copy with the reflection, except for maybe another reflection coming up, and then those can kind of copy each other, make an army of two twos end of turn to attack with. Okay, farewell's gonna exile everything here. So just gonna play this tapped and pass. Could have also potentially cycled it. Since we'll still have the lands to cast Atraxa. Okay, let's give this a shot. Found creature, artifact, enchantment. Probably go for cruelty, actually. A land we can grab. An untapped land, although we already have one, so maybe we want to cycle instead. And then instance is cut down. Yeah, the question here is whether we want cruelty or binding. And there's arguments for both, but Cruelty gets back Atraxa, which likely finds more answers. For now, another Binding. And our opponent cycles Proving Ground. And what's next? Herd Migration, so opponent's going with some different domain synergies. Well, could Cruelty starting from Chapter 1 to have a look? Soul of Windgrace can keep ramping. Because I don't feel the need to get back Atraxa right away. I guess Atraxa also got exiled earlier with a Farewell, so I kind of missed that interaction. So we don't have one to bring back. But um, yeah, we'll get a Soul of Windgrace going and then maybe a Bankbuster as well. Sure. Get the opponent's land back. And then just play an untapped land so we can activate Bankbuster right away. And then if they kill Soul of Windgrace, Cruelty can maybe reanimate it. Joint Exploration. Opponent bottomed both, that's promising. And their own Atraxa makes sense. So, Binding, Edict, another Farewell, Vraska, Herd Migration. At least they can grab both Migration and Farewell. But yeah, feels like we're behind now. Need to find an answer for the points Atraxa and then Cruelty to bring it back. Okay, that works. So make them sacrifice a non-token creature. So point one with farewell. So I could also cruelty starting from chapter one, take away the points Vraska. I think I would rather get back a Traxa while we can. And then if I do it now, I can still crew Bankbuster attack as opposed to draw, since next turn our points somewhat likely to wipe the board. 
Now I guess if they get rid of enchantments, they also get rid of their own leyline binding and we would get back our own Atraxa. So maybe it's actually fine to start from chapter one. Although then they could just binding the cruelty instead of having to farewell. But then we still have Bangbuster and our Soul of Wind Grace going off, so I think that's fine. Okay, Eternal Wonder is a good one too, but Vraska I think is the bigger problem right now. And then just attack with Soul of Wind Grace. Could uh, cycle a land first to draw. And get it back. So we'll see if they go for farewell or if they just try and remove the cruelty with the binding. Could see farewell just hitting creatures and artifacts. Okay, survey for ramp instead. So it looks like they're going for binding here. Okay, chapter 2 goes off, so we could grab another Atraxa or how about a Kami War. Uh, the rest is also an option, take away Farewell. And then we have Binding to get back an Atraxa at any point. Can start with the rest perhaps. See if there's a response. Okay, I'll grab Farewell. And then... Just going to cycle a land, attack with Soul of Wind Grace. Maybe they make a sacrifice it. And then I could crew Bankbuster to sacrifice that instead. And still draw on the way out. Okay, and then we still have the mana for Celestis into Fable or Glissa, and um, don't want to overextend into the Emperor necessarily, but Celestis into Glissa seems fine. Okay, Glissa threatens to destroy the Leyline Bindings. And then final chapter of Cruelty gets back a truck up, put on top deck to another one. That's a problem. So they've got four mana left. And we see Wandering Emperor, which can exile Soul of Wind Grace at the very least. Another Hurt Migration, Briefcase, Exploration, and they have Double Binding in hand. So this game is far from over. But for now, we'll reanimate an Atraxa. And then... Kami War, I think, over another Binding. Grab an Untapped Land, Duress, Celestus, and Cut Down. Although, how many cards do we have left in Library? 29. Alright, so we're not close to decking. So I'm okay grabbing a Celestus and a Cut Down. Can maybe start with the duress once again. Opponent does have four mana thanks to the briefcase, so they can flash an emperor. We have drag to deal with herd migration. Binding is the most flexible answer, so probably just grab a binding. And then Kami War, Exile Atraxa. I think that's better than getting back another Atraxa when we have a million cards in hand. Okay, and then can kill the token here with a cutdown. Attack, forcing them to potentially deal with uh, Glissa or Soul of Windgrace. Get back headquarters. It's going to be a binding. 
on Glissa, presumably. So I could binding again in response. And then we get back another Atraxa, which is a bit overkill at this point, to be fair. Next turn they could Eternal Wanderer to leave us with a single creature. I think we let this happen. And then for now I could play Fable. Then they would leave us with a Shaman token. I think that's still fine. Got a couple cards we wouldn't mind discarding. Okay, pass it back. Opponent cycling the herd migration since they probably suspect some sort of sweeper. And Eternal Wonder. Now I could also cut down my token in response, but then it would still leave us with Wind Grace and then exile it with Emperor. So this is fine. Okay, opponent just flickering, uh, so they would get it back. I can get back my own Atraxa here, which would then replace the current Atraxa, so they never get to flicker it. So that still works. So we'll save this one. So our opponent doesn't get to flicker theirs. And get some more goodies. Probably still a Soul of Wind Grace. Fable is our enchantment. And then a tower's fine. Okay. Joint Exploration goes digging. And then our trucks having Vigilance means we can take out Eternal Wanderer with it. And we also have Kami War taking up here. Okay, opponents got their own Kami War. We'll see what they take out here. Atraxa. Fair enough. Take our draw step. Another Atraxa. So what do we want to return with the Kami War? Yeah, I guess we're not quite able to kill Eternal Wanderer right now. So maybe I should bounce it. Make them discard. And then we can loot, discarding a Dragon of Celestus. Could also discard a land to get back with the Soul of Wind Grace. Make a treasure. Mirax from the opponent to get back. Next turn, our opponent could bounce binding, get back binding. They can deal with a few of my creatures. Wouldn't mind finding another Duress if we have any left, but I guess we've already drawn both. So that's not an option. So can definitely get another Fable going. Cycle Tower. Play a land and pass with seven cards in hand. And we'll see what Tipun decides to do with a Kami War. Just bouncing a token. Can discard drag. Another Kami War of the top. Exiles are Kami War, it seems. Suppose so got two of those ticking up. And they're gonna maybe keep up Wandering Emperor. Edict can at least deal with a Planeswalker. This card lands and cut down. And another binding is useful. Okay then, so let's say we attack. Opponent exiles Soul of Wind Grace. Can just play another one. Take it from there, although next turn opponent gets to transform Kami War, bounce something else. So I don't know if we want to play another Atraxa here. 13 cards left, so... Don't have a ton of win conditions remaining, so it might be time for Mirex. Get back a tower. And there's Wandering Emperor. I'm not overconfident. Yes, 
Exile soul. My judgment is final. And play another one. And then I think we just pass. Plan on activating Mirax end of turn. And discard another drag. There's Eternal Wonder. And we'll wait and see what they decide to do. Surrender now, and we all leave with our lives. Gonna try and flicker Kami War, so in response. Probably go for the throat, take it out. And our opponent concedes. Awesome, what a grindy game here in the mirror match. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems totally fine. Overlook probably wants to get a swamp, so we have double black for our sweeper. Turn two likely to bankbuster. And then turn three fable. Opponent in the meantime, turn one planes, mono white, and farm hand, so it's gonna be a more mid-rangey deck. So it's going to be another long grindy game, most likely. Don't mind getting Fable going. And then I should be able to discard a cut down, since I don't think we'll need it. Turn 3, could see one of the enchantments, going to be a bank buster instead. That one's pretty good against us, since we don't have a ton of answers to artifacts. And a late on arms to exile our token, that's too bad. Okay, now I'll discard a land in case we pick up Soul of Wind Grace and a cut down. Okay, attracts us nice, so we can play Celesta still draw with Bankbuster if we don't need to edict. Opponent probably playing their fair share of planeswalkers as well. I'll take one. And to draw end of turn. Can discard another land, or we can let go of a drag to the bottom. Doesn't seem like we'll need one anytime soon. Kami Wars, excellent. And we can already cast it now. And that's a perfect answer to the bank buster. So now we're pulling ahead. And then Kami War into Atraxa as a great sequence. Five mana for the Dawn Sky. Would have been nice to exile as well. But we'll maybe just bounce it for the time being and then find a Leyline Binding to exile later. Alrighty, so play Atraxa. Which can also crew Bankbuster. And our opponent explodes. Too much value for the Mono White deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand could use an extra land or two, but it's actually not bad. Third land plays Celestus, and then Soul of Wind Grace can uh, get lands back from the graveyard. And Anvil certainly something we wouldn't mind exiling. But uh, now we can duress and then storefront, likely to get a green source. Double eaten alive and fable, just grab fable here, leaving them with flesh quarter as their next play. And then storefront sadly cannot get red or green, so probably just get second black source for drag. And then we're just a land away from Celestus, which sets up our soul of wind grace. Opponent runs out Flesh Quarter, and if we kill it in our turn, then they won't get a token from Oni Cult Anvil, which is pretty important. And then Edict, perfect answer to the Flesh Quarter. Or we can play Celestus, take a hit from the Flesh Quarter and answer it next turn. 
Or we can maybe get our Soul of Wind Grace going in the meantime. Yeah, let's just develop our Celestus here. Can still cut down a smaller creature in the opponent's turn. And I'm okay taking three. Drag to the bottom could also answer Flash Gorger nicely. Okay, there's another one. So drag is minus four, minus four at the moment. And we actually couldn't cast Soul of Wind Grace yet since we have too many black sources, not enough red and green. And we'll, we'll sack one of them to drain for one. And then we still have double edict for future Flash Gorgers. We can also get around the tokens produced by the Anvil, since we can make them sack a non-token creature. Liliana? It's kind of scary. But Edict can also sacrifice Planeswalkers. And there's our green source for Soul of Wind Grace. So if I play a green source, I'm still not going to be able to cast a 1 mana binding. So I wouldn't be able to Soul of Wind Grace plus binding here. Which is what we need to get rid of Liliana. So we'll just make them sacrifice a Planeswalker. And then pass with Binding and Edict available, and hopefully next turn pull ahead with Soul of Wind Grace. No need to exile the Anvil just yet, but I might go for it at some point. And a Bangbuster seems great, so Edict can go. And then Soul of Wind Grace, get back our fetch land. And our opponent will be able to exile it here with Eaten Alive. So that gets around its potential indestructible as well. But I think we'll be just fine. Get our Bankbuster going. And we may as well draw and discard. Don't need Duress anymore. So Wind Grace down, and then we'll draw with Bankbuster, and sure we'll just exile the Anvil now. Could have also waited until the opponent's turn to switch it to Nighttime, but then if they sack Anvil to itself they'll get a 1-1 token, so want to avoid that. Opponent's got another Anvil. And an Omnixilis, at least without casualty. Makes a token. Don't think we need to go for the throw to token just yet. And then might as well thin out a deck before drawing with the Bankbuster. Get a mountain. And then Bankbuster can draw. So it's going to switch to nighttime automatically, so no need to activate Celestus. Question is whether we want to cycle this headquarters, and that seems fine. Okay. Can discard Overlook now. I've got plenty of mana. And another Soul of Wind Grace is nice. So we'll just take the damage from Obnixilis for now. opponent keeps the 1-1 one, one back to potentially block a bank buster. So yeah, now I could see go for the throat killing the devil and then Soul of Wind Grace can crew bank buster. Alternative was playing soul with enough mana to potentially make it indestructible. And our opponent already concedes, don't even have to show them Kami War or Atraxa, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, can uh, potentially play turn 2 Harvester if we fetch up a mountain. Bit of early interaction here with Cut Down, and hopefully we can buy time to get to the Kami War. Opponent green-white, toxic, okay. So we'll need our early removal, and I might just kill Skralv right now. Does delay Harvester a bit, but that's fine.
adversary. Okay, so I guess it's just a green-white aggro deck, not necessarily poison. So I want to fetch a mountain, and then next turn maybe go tapped headquarters plus harvester. Could also play headquarters now to get access to cheap leyline binding, although harvester still trades for adversary just fine, and we need to get a rat online. My draw Fable of the Mirror Breaker as well, which we might want to play instead. Okay, Thalia is gonna delay things a little bit. All the more reason to want to play a creature here. And then Headquarters versus Tower. This adds blue and white. This adds blue, white, and green, so. Could trade for Adversary, could save Harvester to kill Thalia. Both are reasonable. We'll eventually want to deal with Thalia, so it may be worth it to take the damage here. Although, I also want to keep my life total nice and high. Opponent passes, there's another Leyline Binding. So if I play a Sanctum, we could potentially Binding twice. Opponent could also have another Thalia on hand for all we know. So I'm not in a hurry to run it out. Okay, Adlin will respond with Binding. And then do we want to exile Adlin right now? Not too far from a Kami War either, but it's probably best to keep the board as clear as possible. And then I'm not tempted to discard since we'll be able to use our lands here to cast Kami War. Now I could maybe discard a tower or just cycle it. Okay, never mind. Peacekeeper is going to name Kami War to delay that. Probably we'll find a removal spell for Peacekeeper before we get enough lands to cast it for 8 mana. So let's cycle this first. And can play Fable in the meantime. And there's another Kami War that's a little awkward, but we can maybe discard it next turn. Still happy to play a land out. Then no need to use the blood token when we have our second chapter coming up. Okay, Cathara, good answer to the Shaman. But now the board is looking good for a potential sweeper as well. The rest I don't expect to be very good, even though our opponent could be playing some protection spells like Tyvar Stand. Just discard the rest Kami War. And there's our drag, perfect. We can drag, clearing the board, and setting up our reflection to survive. And then now we could Kami War next turn. Thalia's gonna delay that for another turn, unless we draw an untapped land. There we go. Could also play Soul of Wind Grace. But at least our opponent won't be able to cast Tyvar Stand because of their own Thalia attacks. So, this seems fine. Peacekeeper. We can bounce next turn with our second chapter. So this game seems well in control now. Opponent will have to discard. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. It's another nice one here against Naya humans. Okay, so we got to see our five color Atraxa and Soul of Wind Grace deck in action, and I'm quite impressed by how it performed. It's got a good mix of removal to stay alive against the aggressive decks in the format, but it can also outgrind the grindiest of decks, even in the mirror match like we saw. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.